be my mom's favorite scripture that she meditated on all the time. Um, I have a built-in microphone, <laughs> but nonetheless, my husband wanted to make sure this was spot on, so hopefully you'll all be able to hear me. I'm pretty sure that all of you are familiar with Proverbs 17.22. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person of their strength. And we know that to be true. A cheerful heart is good medicine, so therefore, I'd like to start with a funny story that I heard a little bit ago. It made me laugh, and hopefully it'll put a smile on your face too. Keep in mind, it's not doctrinally sounded. <laughs> so a cat and dog went to heaven on the same day. They died and went to heaven. And a few days after they had been there, St. Peter ran into the cat. And he asked the cat, so how are you liking heaven so far? And the cat said, oh my gosh, I love it in heaven. And St. Peter said, you know, I am so glad you said that and glad to hear it. But is there anything I might get you that might make heaven even a little bit better for you? So the cat thought and thought, thought some more, and decided, you know what, actually, yes. If you were to give me a pair of roller skates, that would be super, because heaven is such a big place that I can get around heaven a little faster this way. St. Peter said, consider it done. You'll have those skates today. So a few days after that encounter, St. Peter ran into the dog. And he asked the dog the same question. So, how are you liking heaven so far? And the dog said, oh man, heaven is the best. And just when I thought it couldn't get any better, I discovered Meals on Wheels. <laughs> oh, the joy for that dog. <laughs> Would you please bow your heads and we'll start with a prayer. Dear Lord, I do thank you that we are all here together. I pray, Father, that you will open our eyes and our ears and have our hearts receptive to your word. And Lord, our desire is to make our life an alleluia. In your name we pray, amen. Many, many, many years ago, more than I'd like to even admit to, I saw someone wearing a t-shirt that actually caught my attention. Not only was it whimsical in nature, but it really had a good message. And that impacted me way back then, and that message still has an impact on me today. Now I wish that I could throw it up on the screen so you could see what I was looking at, but since I don't have that availability, I'm gonna do my best to describe what I saw, and hopefully you'll be able to picture this. So on the t-shirt, were, was a picture of two little grandma ladies. Now, grandma for me may be great, 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 great grandma for some of the young ones out here. But they were both very sweet and demure looking. They were wearing a brooch with a shawl over their shoulders, their hair in a bun. They were wearing sweet little grandma dresses with their nylons rolled down to their grandma shoes. And they were both looking over the devil who's now knocked out cold on the ground with the stars circling around his head. Now the one little grandma's holding her purse like this. So it's very obvious she knocked the devil out. And the caption on the shirt read, he tried to steal my joy. <laughs> he tried to steal it, but he did it. She took care of it and she maintained her joy. So why is it important that we as Christians maintain our joy? Well, in 1 Peter 5, 8, we are instructed, be alert, be sober of mind, because the devil, who is your enemy, is prowling around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he might devour. Now, those are some pretty powerful picture words. Be alert. Be sober of mind, because the enemy, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for anyone, someone, whom he might devour. You know, we go on to read in John 10.10, 10, 
where it says the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. So it's no wonder that we're instructed to be alert and sober of mind. See, the enemy wants to steal our joy. He wants to take that away from us. He would love for us to live our lives trapped in frustration, unhappiness, sorrow, and even heartbreak, too. But don't let this, the devil, steal your joy. On the other hand of the coin, God wants us to enjoy our lives and to live our lives to the fullest. And we know that's true because in the word of God, if we are to expand on John 10.10, 10, where we read, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, it goes on to say, but I have come that they may have life and life to the full. The word of God tells us that God is the one who gives us life, and he wants us to live it to abundance, in abundance. Now, what I feel is kind of sad is that I see too many well-meaning Christians walking around like they've been baptized in a vat of vinegar. They have totally lost their joy, and I think it's because they have a little bit messed up thinking. They've equated happiness, meaning the same thing as joy, and in actuality, they're two different things. Happiness is based on our happenings around us. What's going on around us are happenings. So in other words, it's emotional. It's an emotion and it's temporal. And when we do that, when we base our happiness on an emotion, we start living a roller coaster life. When things are going good, we're way up here. When things are going bad, we are way down low. When things are going good, we're up here. When things are going bad, we're down here. And so thus, the roller coaster life that we start living. But God never intended us to live a roller coaster life. No, what God gives us is more powerful than just an emotion. It is that true joy. And as young kids, and even today, we sing of that joy in Nehemiah 8.10. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And that means that he gives us strength in all situations to overcome when we're possessed with that true joy. But it is a decision and a choice we make whether to be filled with that joy. When we choose to focus on a problem instead of on God, we're messing up, and we're missing out on the abundant life that God has in store for us. Joy is a condition of your heart, and that condition is rather significant because from the heart, everything flows out. And when your heart is right and in tune with the Lord, then your life not only becomes full, but it becomes fruitful. When you place your eyes on God and you realize that, you know what, he is in control, you become unworried, untroubled, at ease, peaceful, and content, even in the worst, worst, worst of circumstances. And I know that to be true because of watching my mother's example of trusting in God. My mom taught me so much over the years growing up, but I especially learned about trusting in God when I walked with her through her last days on earth. See, my mom always looked, lived life looking up. She knew where her source of strength came from, where her true joy came from, and her eyes were definitely fixed on God, not her surroundings. See, my mom didn't just talk the talk. My mom walked that walk. My mom lived. The joy of the Lord is my strength. My mom knew that a cheerful heart was good medicine. And God's word was alive and well 
in my mom. On Father's Day of 2016, my mom passed away after a very lengthy illness. And in the last few months of her life, she was in excruciating pain, horrific. My mom was dying, and yet, you know what? My mom did not worry at all. My mom remained at ease. My mom was at peace. My mom maintained her joy because she kept her eyes fixed on God. She trusted wholly in her God. I watched my mom in those days. Not only myself, but family and friends prayed fervently, unceasingly, that God would heal her. But the healing didn't come the way that I wanted it to come. My mom continued to get weaker and weaker every single day. And yet, she did not allow the devil to steal her joy. I remember going before the Lord one day and just crying out before him for that healing to happen. And how could this even be possible that my mom could stay at such peace and, and maintain her joy? And the answer was very clear to me. You see, my mom meditated on scriptures day and night, especially pertaining to scriptures about joy, peace, and contentment. She delighted in the Lord, and she rejoiced in the Lord, just like Philippians 4.4 tells us. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. My mom stood fastly and claimed scriptures aloud, and even though she was feeble in her own body, she was singing with all of her might and her heart and her being praises to God. And when I visited my mom, she would say, Oh, Kim, isn't God good? And she knew he was. I think, though, she realized I was the one struggling. I had my eyes fixed on the problem at hand, and I was forgetting to lift my eyes and keep them fixed on God and know that he was in control. In the midst of that challenging trial, my mom never lost her joy. I can honestly say that. You see, my mom was that little grandma lady on the t-shirt with her purse in the air. She whacked that devil good immediately. Although she didn't use her purse to knock out the devil, she, her arsenal was the word of God. She was not going to let the devil steal her joy, and he didn't. My mom possessed an incomparable power within her that couldn't be shaken because my mom's roots went way, way, way deep in Christ. Those last days took me to my knees in tears. But just as my mom did, we also learned to lean on Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. For whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Oh, well, my mom sure did. Because even when she was in the worst of storms, and those waves were relentless, and they swept over her. My mom kept her eyes fixed on Jesus. She already knew she had the victory. My dad would wake up in the middle of the night, um, and he'd look over, and my mom was using a flashlight <laughs> to read the scriptures. She didn't want to disturb my dad, but she was going to meditate on the word of God. And she used those days to praise God, her God, and to pray for her family and her friends and anyone that God put on her heart. 
In fact, the last time that my mom went to the hospital, she told me, you know, Kim, and my mom was always very active in the church and active with family, and, and she said, I, I might not be able to do those things anymore, but one thing I can do is I can pray, and pray she did. She prayed for every single doctor that walked in the door, whether they wanted it or not. They were being prayed over, and the nurses, and the staff, anybody that walked by the door, mom was praying for them. And you know what? Everyone said they felt the presence of Almighty God in that room. He was with her. They were touched by my mom's faithfulness, and they were touched by God's faithfulness to her. My mom was still continuing to witness and bring people to Christ, even in the last hours. My mom didn't let that illness defeat her. Like I mentioned before, she had the victory. And she was filled with God's inexpressible and glorious joy, which we read about in 1 Peter 1, 8 through 9. God did answer our prayers for healing. God gave my mom the ultimate healing, because my mom is home now. And make no mistakes, I can just see her now. She's jumping and leaping and praising God. She's continuing what she loves so much, to praise her Lord with all of her whole being. My mom is filled with that true joy. You know, I think that's what I learned from my mom, too, is that that inner joy that only comes through Jesus is such a powerful tool. And we can only get that when we surrender our lives to Jesus, when we ask him into our hearts as our Lord and Savior, when we get out of the driver's seat and let God do the driving, when we know that we were created for a special purpose and a plan, and we let God use us the way he sees fit, then we do feel that presence. Not only are we full of that joy, like I mentioned, but we become fruitful. God wants you to have an abundant life that is full of inexpressible joy in and through him. So don't let that devil steal your joy. Keep your eyes fixed on him. Would the ushers please come forth and we'll take the offering. <clears throat> 